welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in pop culture. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Scarly House. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about why millennials are considered the worst tippers and how Netflix's new series special is breaking boundaries. Plus, Reality star Stassi Schroeder is, and host and author David Bertka join the table to discuss their new books. But first... But first, wedding, wedding bells are ringing. Priyanka Chopra and Mindy Kaling will cordially invite audiences to theaters <laughs> soon for a new flick. The ladies are teaming up to bring a star-studded Indian wedding comedy to the big screen that will reportedly take place across America and India and showcase the culture classes that ensue. This is perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I, I cannot wait for this. Like, I love my big fat Greek wedding. I love <gasps> Crazy Rich Asians. I uh, think showing a wedding is such a, an amazing window into different cultures and experiences. I think it's something that is really, like, different in every culture. And it's such a fun entry point to sort of have fun, but to also explore, I'm sure, as they yeah. will, like, a lot of different themes. Yeah, and I really love the timing of this because, obviously, Priyanka just got married yes. to Jonas. Yep. And I feel like this will be a, a big learning moment for a lot of people because so many people were like, oh, why is their wedding so extra? Why is it going right. so long? And I'm like, literally, that's their tradition. Yeah, that's yeah, their week culture. Long party. I know, as the only Asian here, I I just can't say we love extra. We love sparkle. We love <laughs> golden <laughs> stuff, like luxury. Yeah, it just feels good. Like the very uh, important moment oh, in yeah. your life. Yeah. yeah. And I think like, like you were saying, like what my, my big factory wedding did so well is that you know, of course, th it's. Their eccentricities, you know, a bunt, a bunt, like the <laughs> funny thing, kick. Nick, 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 like weird things that maybe not everyone can get. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's a wedding that which we all can get. So you kind of find the similarities, things that unite us more than divide us. And I think yeah. this is such a great idea to represent Asian culture mm -hmm. to a mainstream audience. Um, so I'm really happy it's getting made. And I think specifically showing the narratives of a Greek American or an Indian American, yeah. somebody who maybe is a first generation, second generation, those different experiences are so important. And I think Mindy Kaling is the perfect person to right. be behind this. Obviously, if you watch the Mindy Project, she really did just sort of break out of every stereotype. Mm -hmm. She had this really dynamic character that had all these different, she was very complex. You know, it was hard to put her in a box. And I think we need more of that because so often right. Indian American representation is in a box, like a poo yeah. from the Simpsons. I mean, uh, looking back, that is such a horrible right. representation of an entire culture. And I think now we're starting to see some of the issues that that created in media. And I like that now we're correcting it in a really real and authentic way with like real narratives. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Sign me up. Right. I, mean, I feel like yeah. the Jonas Brothers might be in it too. Who knows? Just because they've been so cheeky lately. Like they released that Game of Thrones uh, edit of themselves for their cool song. Right. Yeah. I feel like they really support their partners. So I think they're definitely going to find a way to be in yeah. this film I think with they her. they have to be. Yeah. And, and Mindy's, <laughs> I think, co writing this. You know, her film Late Night comes out soon, Emma yeah. Thompson, which she wrote and I wrote stars and everything. Oh, yeah. And she may direct this film as well. So really big deal for her to be able to do that because this is a major motion picture. Universal He's is kind boss. of is the studio behind it. So it's just, it's going to be huge. I'm so, because Crazy Rich Asians was so good. So and good. it introduced me to a whole culture I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure this film would do the same. So what, what do you feel when you first saw that? Like, you think we are crazy? Uh, <laughs> no, I thought, wow, you guys are a lot like my loud Italian, Amer <laughs> Italian American family. But I, Crazy Rich Asians, like Singapore, I knew nothing about in the culture and mm -hmm. the lifestyle and the extravagance and the the history as well, like how um, the, so the class divide yeah. of that, of that yeah. city. So I'm excited for this to show me as well how Indian American versus Indian um, native culture, yeah. how they relate and come together in a wedding. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I was I, also uh, super excited. Did you see that uh, Mindy Kaling did an open casting call yes. for her Netflix oh, yeah, show? Yeah. I think that is so cool that people are still like starting to do that again because that's how we discover new talent. And I mean, you know, I, I think it's the best thing in the world. I, I didn't understand that you had to be in a union to actually audition for some things. Like, I didn't know that that was like a hard and fast rule. I thought maybe sometimes you could. So this is huge because if you yeah. think about how many probably Indian American actors just don't have representation yeah. and wouldn't even have the opportunity, it makes it so much of a bigger deal, mm -hmm. I think, when you understand the industry, and which I didn't really fully before. Yeah, it can be very frustrating. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah to, like, giving you, people are like, why don't you just go out there and hand out your headshot? And you're like, that's not how it works no. at all. Like you literally need someone to believe in you. And it's hard because how do you get a job without an agent? How do you get an agent without a job? Exactly. You know, it's not, it's not easy. I'm just very curious, are they gonna bring the whole family to India or are they gonna mm. bring the family to the US? Ooh. That would be very interesting to watch because to see an American girl in India and go back to the country totally. will mm -hmm. be very fun. Right. I think so. Or maybe do, yeah. do both, maybe? I mean, yeah. Well, you got to have two weddings, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of my Indian American friends do. They right. have two and weddings. Priyanka, yeah. one here and, one and in Nick India. had multiple weddings, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. They one did. in New Jersey, that local <laughs> Italian restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> one in the palace in India. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it, and we'll be watching this. I'm sure we'll get more details on casting and stuff over the next couple mm -hmm. of months. So it'll be fun to watch. Uh, moving up, moving on, <laughs> how much to tip for service is always a hot debate. Do you leave 15, 18, or 20%? Well, according to studies, your age could affect how much you leave, with millennials becoming the cheap generation by consistently choosing to tip the lowest percentage, if they tip at all. We cheat. <sighs> <laughs> well, I personally don't really tip people, like, w not people, like, when the restaurant, like, asked me to busing it, like, myself, or fast totally. food. Totally, yeah. Like, what, I'm not tipping anything, but when you print out the check, it still have a spot of, Putting your tip is like nobody did anything to right. or, or I order to go. I'm not gonna tip for that. It's just me. I don't know. Is that too harsh on people? No, I think we're actually <laughs> gonna have a good debate about this because I'm sort of more with you. I certainly will. I mean, waitresses always. Uh, yeah. The guy who delivers my laundry always. When it's a clear service for me, yeah. yes. <laughs> Taxi drivers, I don't really tip that often unless they help me with my bags if I'm going to the airport or something like that. I don't actually think I should have to tip because they're being paid right. like a, a wage. Well, 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 I think Uber and Lyft and those types of services have changed the way we think about tipping taxi cool. drivers because I think it's just assumed that you would tip them. I have a hard time not tipping taxi drivers. So I will say if you use one of those apps, Curb, and set your tip, you can set it below the 20% the or oh. whatever, so you don't have that awkward of like them looking at you being like, what's your tip yeah. gonna be? I think when it comes to waiters, I always do 20%. Always. I'm just learning about you tip on pre-tax versus post-tax. I didn't even realize that's a possibility yeah. that people do that. I always do 20% just because my family's in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. Like, it is a real thing. I know how hard these waiters work, and many of them don't make a living wage no. without tips, so they rely on it. Yeah, I am such a fear-based tipper. I feel like I always do 20%, even if like they clearly s like spat in my food. I'm like, of course, 20%. <laughs> yeah. And I like tip like, I, I even tip for, you know, this is kind of like a scam that some shops do where you're just like, you know, it's like a little like a like knickknack shop and then you go and check out and at the end they have square. So they yeah. put like 15%, 20% and I'm still like, ugh, 20%. Right. <laughs> like really? I cannot, like I'm so, Scared, Who's and if I don't, you? you feel somebody's watching. Yeah, because you? you're. I pay everything with my card too, right. so I'm like, I don't want anyone, anyone to be like, oh, Shannon Coffee is a bad tipper. Right. And my yeah. sister's a bartender, and she goes everywhere and tips thirty percent. So Whoa. I feel like we, like, are. I don't know, like, we, I mean, we don't have that money to be tipping, but I feel like if you're broke, you tip more. Yeah, that is kind of an understanding of, like, <laughs> these people really work for it. But that's so interesting, because why millennials are, um, like, 63% pay less than other generations is because to save money, because you can, over the course of how many times you eat out, you tip yes. on the pre-tax um, price, you're saving like $400 a year roughly, which is a lot yeah. of money. That's a lot of totally. money. I'm just really bad at math, for, so for me to like even go to the pre-tax is just like another step. So I just but can it, just look at I know, but I just always look at the bolded number and I'm like that. But then right. I do that little <laughs> trick. I think I typically end up tipping between 18 and 20% just based on That's math, solid. because yeah. when I just do the thing where you move the decimal over once and then you uh. double it, so if it's like 850, sometimes I'll leave 16, sometimes I'll leave 17. So it's like we that, Yeah, that depends on how well the or experience not eight, was. Sorry, four or five. If you're rounding up or <laughs> yeah, not. Sorry. Yeah. But um definitely I, I think this is interesting. I don't I my friends, I think usually all tip roughly 20%, but I do have the friend who's like, that waitress was mean. I'm not doing a, like a full 20%. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you're yeah. harsh. I was just shocked that up to she had a bad day. 
if so it's a waitress or a waiter. I'm like, they probably had, I've been a waiter before and I definitely have had bad days. I've like forgotten tables and I was penalized for it. And it kind of sucks because if, at that time, I think my base pay was like $3 an hour. Yeah. So you really, you really need the tips to like pay bills. You know what I, I saw a tweet from Nikki Glazer, a comedian, mm -hmm. um, and she said that if you don't tip your, if you stay at a hotel and you don't tip housekeeping, mm -hmm. you're a monster. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I didn't even like, I don't stay at hotels that much, but I was like, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. You have to, yeah. If I'm saying multiple nights, again, like if it's like I'm there for three nights and I will leave like a couple bucks. But if it's one night, I typically don't. Yeah. Because well, they have to flip the room anyway. One more thing before we finish, because I, I think what, what should happen is, is that what happens in Europe is that everyone should make a living wage and the price well, of yeah. food yes. should go up and we don't have to tip. That's yeah. probably the way, like cause, um, that video, that, that video that um, Yahoo Finance mm -hmm. guy posted, Cory Booker, who's running for president, of course, we like don't do this or whatever, because in New Jersey, people make like, they can pay waiters like $2 an hour or whatever, yeah. so they need tipping. But if everyone made $15 an hour, then they wouldn't rely on tips so much. Yeah. So vote. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And you know what? Um, uh, Build Brunch hosts are now accepting tips. Yeah, yes. we're accepting tips. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, now it's okay. time for today's first guest. You may know Stassi Schroeder from her iconic one-liners on the hit Bravo show Vanderpump Rules and her popular podcast Straight Up with Stassi. Today, she's here to talk about her new book, Next Level Basic, which shows readers how to have fun and celebrate being themselves. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch welcome to Stassi Schroeder. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for being here. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Thank nice you. Hey, so this is so exciting. Tell us about your book, Next Level Basic. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, basically, it's about embracing your inner basic bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but honestly, like, um, ultimately, it's not just about like what we consider typically basic. Mm -hmm. It's really about whatever it is that you're into, embracing mm -hmm. that and owning that and not feeling ashamed about that. So basically, it's a lot of self love. I love like, that. Yeah. Like, it's okay that I love Jeopardy. Yes, that is it's totally okay. Dirty, that's my thing. Yes, and run with it. Thank Never you. turn back. I will not. <laughs> really <laughs> taking the pressure off there. Because yeah. sometimes it's like, we gotta be unique, but there's power in being basic. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I've learned that. Yeah. I mean, I love boat rides in the Hamptons. That's basic <laughs> as fuck. <well. Yeah. laughs> I embrace it. I will go to Soul Cycle and then go to Sweet Green, and I'm like, this is so basic. Oh and my love gosh, it, it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so like what's a good like quick lesson on how to own your basicness? I think it's just finding what you really love and like sharing that mm -hmm. and just really like not being afraid of that because really like you never know who you're going to actually bond with mm -hmm. when you're actually being yourself mm -hmm. because so often like you go on dates or you go to parties or like work things and you feel like you should be talking about certain things but then you meet somebody who like is kind of like in the corner and you're like, yeah, did you watch The Bachelor last night? <laughs> and then you kind of end up finding a new friend because you're bonding over like a shared love of something. And it's like, if we're all just like authentic, I think the world would be like a lot easier for everyone. Yeah, yeah. totally. And you're in the reality space, so I'm sure people feel like they know you, but you really shared some personal stories and experiences in the book. So was there ever any hesitation to that or anything that you, you know, no, didn't want to share? No, uh. never. <laughs> no. I mean, I share my life for a living, like not just on TV, but with my podcast. And I'm so used to that, that really this was just another outlet to share more that I haven't been able to share before. Right. Yeah. And you also share some exclusive stories from Vanderpump. Yes. Um, so how did you decide which ones to in, put in? Because I'm sure there were, are a lot. <laughs> well, listen, I want to keep my job on Vanderpump Rules um, <laughs> and I didn't want to piss off Bravo. So, Fair. you know, I left some out. And so I, I kind of was able to navigate like which ones I think they would be okay with me sharing. <laughs> the fine line. Yeah. That was a really diplomatic response too. Yeah. <laughs> Very LVP of yeah. me, that response. <laughs> um, speaking of Bravo, that's something that's maybe considered basic that I'm very proud to love. Yes. I love Bravo and I love Baron the Front Rules. Um, I, how do I put this? Your arc from season one, season seven, I think rivals that of Santa Stark in Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, I wow. think it really is such an incredible- End this now, I feel so honored. Oh I my mean gosh. That. It is, I watched this at the beginning, it is such a journey when we met you, when you're with Jax, that whole drama, to know where you are now, yeah. with your boyfriend, and just the headspace you're in. What's it like being in season seven on one of the most successful shows on Bravo? 
I like, mean, it's freaking awesome. Right. Like, I, mean, I mean, it's great. I feel so lucky. Honestly, I feel just really lucky because they're all my friends, mm -hmm. which, you know, gets hard during filming because yeah. normally, like, in your a typical job, like, you call your friends afterwards to bitch or complain <laughs> or, like, you know, go get drinks and that's who you turn to. But, like, when I'm fighting with my friends at my work, mm -hmm. it's, like, crap. Right. There's no <laughs> one left to turn to. So I'm going to have to deal with this on my own. Right. Yeah. You can just turn to your Twitter followers. Yeah. They would love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's funny is, um, so you just did a recent interview with the New York Times, which was great. Yeah. And um, you famously once said, I am the devil. But you're still surprised that people may consider you still the villain, which if you watch, you're really not. I really am not. You're really not. I'm you're not. actually the voice of reason. I, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I think I'm a little colorful with my yeah. language. Right. And um, I'm a little morbid. And, you know, I'm interested in, like, you know, the occult and death. And right. I add that to my humor and the way uh -huh. that I, I talk. So I think that it seems kind of villainous. Right. But I've never really felt like I was a villain. Yeah, no, I mean, I've you're, just... you're sitting next to someone who praises the yeah. Dark Lord Satan yeah. all I'm the like, time. like, you are the devil, I, like I worship you. Right. I like you. Like, let's sacrifice some animals together. But, <laughs> just not on this stage. No, okay. Cool. Speaking of your quotes, I mean, one of my favorites is, I don't know what I did to you, but can, I'll take a Pinot Grigio. I like, can't believe that one. I, it's I, such I, an I, epic I, line. Like, I've, I've used it in regular settings, like, just, like, talking to people. People tell me this all the time, and I remember filming that scene right. and not thinking anything of it just I genuinely was just like why is she talking to me she should right. be like getting my order right. so I was like can I get a Pinot Grigio right. and then after that scene my producers were like this is why you're the best and I was like why yeah. and they're like the Pinot Grigio line I'm like I said a Pinot Grigio line I still like don't so do most one-liners which you're famous for just like you just say it's just who you are I, yes like... I just I don't know I don't know that something's gonna turn into a one-liner until all of a sudden people are tweeting it that's so, amazing. Yeah. That's so good. I love it. Well, so you also have a broadcasting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. a, a straight job with uh, Straight Seth, up with Stassi. Stassi. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, I mean, I'm so proud of that because that was like, well, my book is like my second child. Mm -hmm. Like, my podcast was like my first one because mm -hmm. I started it four years ago and mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I would stop it and like pause it every five <laughs> minutes because I'm like, how do you just talk for an hour straight? Like, right. how can you... So yeah. hard, but I feel so proud because it's gone on for so long and I feel like I've, it's like created like a community of like, like-minded people mm -hmm. who like laugh at the same jokes and want to talk about the same sorts of things. And I love going on like the Facebook group chat and see that they all interact with each other and meet up with each other and yeah. bond over that. And it's like, okay, like I feel like I have like kind of like a sense of, of purpose that like I'm, I'm like giving you know, making other people feel like less alone in their own like basicness and weirdness. But <laughs> you, I mean, you got into the game, the podcast game, before it's become this phenomenon. Yeah, I got really lucky with that. You, yeah, yeah, you really, really like, like now everyone, now like, mo everyone and in the mother has a podcast. Podcasting so you were doing is it like the new Instagram. Yeah. Like when people like tell me like I'm thinking of starting a podcast, I'm like, you probably should yeah. because yeah. you know everyone needs one now. Why not? I'm, I'm we're gonna do one too. <laughs> <laughs> is there any future episode you wanna share? Like uh, no, I just take it every week as it is. Okay. I, I've noticed that, like, I really, maybe this I'm just, like, narcissistic, but, like, I like talking about what actually goes on in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's therapy. It, yeah. yeah, it really, it truly is. Right. So, like, whatever's going on that week, I just like to share with my audience. Right. Yeah. But, and what about the ranch dressing? Oh, yeah. What a, I mean, what about ranch like, dressing? I mean, are you going to ever, like, maybe just write, like, a novel about the love of ranch dressing? I feel like I kind of just, like, deserve my own line of ranch yes. dressing. Yes! But you have to yes. do, so I'm from the Midwest, you have to do it with Hidden Valley if you do it. because that is Well, the Hidden company. Valley is the, I mean, they're the number one. <laughs> but I feel like a partnership with them would feel really organic, and your fans would love it, me included, because that is my ranch of choice. Right. And I just love that you speak out in defense of ranch, because we get attacked often. Thank you. And it's a great dressing. Now, which Hidden Valley? Is it, like, the bottle or oh, like yeah. you like the bottles. See, I'm like way into like the Hidden Valley packet so I can oh. make my own. On the go. Oh. Ranch on the go. Oh well that. Oh the packet. Uh, no I mean the packet where oh. like so if I want it like thicker. Do I want it like a little wa more watery? Do I want to be healthy today and use Greek yogurt instead <laughs> of mayonnaise or like yeah. Hidden Valley packet all the way. Revelations. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank that you. is amazing. <laughs> well to celebrate your book we want to play a little game. Okay. So it's basic okay or basic stay away. Okay. 
All right. Basic okay or basic stay away. Yeah. So yeah. we'll give you a topic and you have to say like, or a thing and you're like, no, or yes. Okay, okay. so this is my personal opinion yes. on these. Yes. yes, okay. And we'll just follow blindly. We'll okay. change our lives for you because- mm -hmm. Please, listen, listen yeah. to everything you are a queen. Yeah. <laughs> Please, yeah. Taking photos of your food. A basic stay away. I'm like mm. so over that yeah, one. Same. Yeah, Not it's like no one, like do you ever like really scroll past Instagram and think like, I'm really glad I saw that no. photo of avocado toast. Right. Feel bad, because my boyfriend does this all the time. subtle hint, stop no, it. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> what about Froze? Love it, ba yes. basic basic stay. Yes, yes, love it. We're in that season now, I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Thank okay, uh, juice cleanses. Okay, this one's tricky. I'm gonna go with basic stay because I do these sometimes, but they suck so mm. bad. They work. They work, they really do, but like it's agonizing, yeah. it's painful. Okay, what about our girl, T-Swift? Oh, basic stay. Okay. I am all about her, especially when she came back all like vicious and shit. The political, like, ready to take on the patriarchy. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm like, go you. <laughs> what about Coachella? Another tricky one. Um, <laughs> um, it depends on if you have like an artist band yes. or not. Yeah, changes the game. It when really you have an changes band. the game. Like so, basic stay if you have artist passes. Yes. Basic go away if you don't. Okay. <laughs> then what about uh, watching Bachelor with a glass of wine? Definitely a basic stay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's just cool. cool. Okay. What about having a separate Instagram for your pet? My boyfriend all of a sudden has <laughs> red Instagram. Oh my God. And I'm like, how many people do you really think are looking at this? I mean, is it necessary? Unless your dog is like legitimately some freak of nature, cute animal, I say stay away, okay. basic stay away. And what about being obsessed with like pumpkin spice lattes? Oh, like basic, yeah, yay. Okay. Yay. 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 Whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they taste good, so. <laughs> well. She has spoken, we yeah. know the law. We know. That is the queen. <laughs> yeah. yes. Stassi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And everyone, please make sure to pick up a copy of Next Level Basic wherever books are sold. Woo. Netflix is breaking boundaries with its new show, Special, which features queer and disabled lives on TV. Ryan O'Connell created the eight-episode comedy and also stars as the show's main character. Take a look. I have the cerebral palsy. What's that? It's a disability in the brain manifested through muscular and coordination. OK, now you're just being a drama queen. I'm Ryan, the intern. Listen, Cheyenne, I'm Ryan. I need viral content now. I don't know what I'd write about. Oh, I was hit by a car. Everybody, come hug Ryan. He was hit by a car, and now he's a weird, sad lip forever. Thank you so much. OK, that's great. That's oh. enough. Thank you. If you could get rid of the thing you hate most about yourself, the thing no one else understands, why don't you do it? We gotta get the hell out of here. Everyone just assumed my lump was from my accident, and then I never corrected them. Your disability is part of you. My mom has a secret boyfriend. Didn't you want her to get a life? You told me she was like Brie Larson in room, but like by choice. I'm moving out. I'd like to see how you function without an on-call maid. Getting hit by a car basically kind of just messed my body up. It doesn't look so messed up to me. Sometimes I just feel like, as a non-skinny, non-white girl, I gotta work overtime. I was in the closet about being gay, and then I was in the closet about being disabled, and now, no more closets. I love this show. Yeah. It's so, so good. special. It really, it really, really is. Just the way it's telling this, this, this um, queer story, the story of a disabled person, I think is really important, and I'm, I'm so impressed. I love it, and I just love his journey of just loving himself. That sounds super corny, but it really is. Like each episode, you see him just really kind of coming into his own mm -hmm. uh, in a really organic way. And they're short episodes too, so you can like yeah. binge them. Yeah, they're only so 15 fast. minutes yeah. long, which is awesome. He has said that if he gets a, a second season, he's gonna make them, uh, I think, 30 minutes longer, okay. which would be really cool. I love the whole entire tone of this show from like, uh, he works at this place called, uh, what is it, like? Egg, Egg Woke. Egg Woke. Egg Woke. Yeah. And like, their boss is like, I need viral content, and I'm like, 
like, oh my God, stop, please. Yeah. And of course, like I have to shout out the, the third episode. They yeah. have a gay sex scene mm -hmm. where they have anal and it's like, they actually show how awkward anal can be sometimes. Yeah. And I love that he's just like, anal is insane. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you're like, yes it is. Yeah. I think it's so cute and it feels so real because it is, sex is like awkward yeah. always. Right. And you just like feel for him going through this experience. He's like, I'm not a virgin. And you're like, oh. Right. And you're like, but he, and he hires, hires someone to have sex yeah. with him so yeah. he can kind of like, you know, break the barrier. I thought so that was yeah. such a like positive way mm -hmm. to show a sex worker. Because usually yeah. it's kind of like, oh, a sex worker, it's dirty, it's not emotional. But like sex workers can like literally help someone like open up into their sexuality and totally. like enter the world of actually being active in right. such a beautiful way. Also, yeah. yeah, because I feel like your sexual expression is so tied to your personality and you see him in that moment feeling like excited and you know that like when he walks in to see his mom, she's like, you look different. And like, yeah, yeah he's like carrying himself differently and he's like confident. And you're like, oh, good love for you. It. And I love the show have like all his friend groups also unique and special. So it's yeah. showing him, but also the crowd around him, mm -hmm. like being positive and give him like the reaction and feedback mm -hmm. that made him become who he is, mm -hmm. especially the Indian girl she was. Like I feel related to her because mm -hmm. I'm Asian and I'm more curvy. So mm -hmm. she, like some stuff she's saying, like just make me feel, oh, that's cute or, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, and I love that they developed her character. Mm -hmm. They didn't just have her be this like side character for him that's like, you're doing great. Yeah. It's like way deeper than that. So. Yeah, because it's so funny because the editor in chief basically makes everybody on the staff kind of exploit themselves. <laughs> so that's where you get to actually dig into some of the other characters because it's like, everybody's being called out for like what makes them special or different, yeah. but they're not being tokenized in this show. They're actually, yeah. they get to have a voice, which is mm -hmm. really, I think, rare and special. So if you guys haven't checked it out. Check it show. out. Moving on, now it's time for our next guest. David Bertka is an award-winning host, chef, and actor. His first cookbook, Life is a Party, features 106 recipes, creative party themes, and all the tricks you need to throw a memorable party. Please give a warm Bill Burnt welcome to David Bertka. Welcome to guys. the table. How are you thank doing today? Thank you so much. I'm great. Good. So great watching you guys back there. Oh, you guys have such a nice rapport. Thank you. Oh, thank We've you. worked on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've worked on it. Yes. We have a lot of fun. You know, you know what else is fun? Life is a party. Life is yeah. a party. And you're bringing the party to the table today. I can't believe there's 106 <laughs> recipes in yeah. here. So yeah. what was the process of getting that all together? <clears throat> well, I came up with this idea of doing a, a, a cookbook because on Instagram, I started posting right. shots of my kids and me cooking food and people said, you know what, you should do a book. So yeah. I never really thought about that before, but I think it's kind of, you know, time to do it. So <clears throat> I thought about what kind of book I'd want to do. I love entertaining, <clears throat> excuse me. And I um, just started testing recipes where it was seasonal cooking. So I, it's a seasonal book, uh -huh. goes through all the seasons uh, to uh, help your local farmers and work on seasonal ingredients. And I looked at what, what ingredients I used throughout the whole year, and I tried not to repeat them. And I, you know, I'd wow. come up with the men menus and come up with the parties. And I, you know, just see what, what do I have here? What do I need there? And tested uh, about three to seven times a recipe. Wow. So, wow. <clears throat> yeah. It sounds like you put a lot of work into it, but I know you also turned to your mom for some inspiration. Yeah, it was so a what huge, this have? was a huge endeavor. I, you know, most people do a cookbook within a year. This took two years because wow. I was so adamant about shooting it throughout the season. So I have, you know, you see the fall leaves and you right. see the snow on the ground. And, and my mom was a huge part of my life and a huge part of entertaining. I got into cooking because my mom passed away, and so I thought, you know, I was an actor, well, I still am an actor, but I was, you know, rejection and going in for acting jobs and not necessarily wanting the jobs that you wanted to go in for. Right. Then you get rejected and you don't want to do it. So I thought, <clears throat> I thought, why not go to cooking school? And why not go to uh, get some training, have skill life for your family? <clears throat> um, my mom and dad always, uh, entertained. Mm -hmm. So within the weekends, we would go hang out with family and go to family parties and christenings and birthday parties. And, and they'd put on huge, huge parties and huge fets. And, and we'd 
that we'd learn from that. I love that. I feel like entertaining is kind of a lost art. Sometimes in New York, it feels like we all are in our own silos and people don't have people over. So when I was going through the book, it kind of made me want to throw a little party. Well, you know, you I entertain like part that. of the reason I did this was I, you, you guys, millennials, right. I think that you guys are looking for social stuff to do. Yeah, totally. And this book is all about getting into the kitchen and getting your friends together and not doing a party alone, not being afraid mm -hmm. to throw something by yourself, getting together, you doing this dish, you doing that dish, you coming up with the decor, you come up with the flowers, and you guys make it a joint effort and do something social. Mm. You know, because there's so much in our phones these days. Yeah. It's time to get out there, have a party, don't take life for granted, and, and have a good time. Yeah, I, I love that you mentioned something like, you know, we shouldn't wait to have an excuse for parties, just like throw one. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Love that, because I love a good party. What is the craziest and most random reason you've just thrown a party for? <laughs> if there has been one. Oh my gosh. Uh, Game of Thrones premiere. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a great reason. That's, That's a great reason. Yeah. Yeah. We had like good. beef ribs and my kids made cake pops that looked like icicles. Yes. I mean, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, this was just on the cuff this so past weekend. A family watching Game of Thrones. Well, my together. kids don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> There's a limit. They <laughs> want to watch Game of Thrones. They do. Why? You yeah. guys can't handle it. I was like, you <laughs> might know a really awesome day. In the party, <laughs> planning, which is good. They're... Yeah, they love. I mean, it, it, in our family, this right. is in, in this book, it's a glimpse to how we how we right. celebrate. Yeah. And how we take parties and, and take it to the next level. And our kids love to get involved. They love putting the tables together. Mm. My son is the, the timer. He's like, 10 more minutes! <laughs> and walking around the house and, you know, Neil's shaking cocktails. And <laughs> we all we have a good time. I love that. So so having twins, having your twins, did that, that sort of change, I'm assuming, the way you threw parties and made it more of a family affair? Yeah, yeah, you have to. And, and, and you know what? With kids, I think... People are just saying, oh, they're at the kids' table, and they're going to eat a whole different meal, their chicken yeah. fingers or whatever. No, not in our house. We, right. They eat what we eat. I make a cocktail for the adults, and we make a mocktail for the kids. And oh, make them feel yeah. special. For every cocktail, there's yeah. a mocktail. Yes. So there's, oh, for people so who cute. don't drink or people yeah. who, uh, or kids, I, it, make them feel special as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. All right, so now I have to ask for advice for people who get overwhelmed by throwing parties because that's me. I get really stressed out. I don't think I like ever celebrate my birthday because I'm like, it's so much. Oh, no, much. you gotta celebrate so your much. birthday. No, I like freak out. So like, what? Well, you need to help me calm down, man. I need a party. <laughs> I need a party. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's a lot about the prep getting a list together and knowing what you can do and crossing off that list. But like I said before, get together with your friends. Mm -hmm. You guys make your make friends yeah. Make your friends throw a party for you. I'll help okay. you throw a party. Okay, but I okay. mean, it's good to do it together. Yeah. And, and you know what, the thing is that if you throw a party, you can do, you cook the main dish, that's all you have to be responsible mm -hmm. for. And there's places out, out here in New York that will deliver awesome food. You put it on your own dishes and platters. That's what I'm there's Gold Belly, you guys mm -hmm. know Gold Belly? Oh. Call in. Uh, it's a it's a website that you can get any specialty food from around the whole nation. Oh, so wow. you can get king cake and uh, uh, crawfish from Louisiana. Wow, you can right. get um, uh, sprinkles, cookies, cupcakes from. Well, you can get sprinkles, cookies anywhere. Yeah. But you can get <laughs> milk bar. You can go. You right. know, get barbecue from Texas. You wow. can get lobster from uh, lobster from Maine. I mean, there's these places you can come in and, and call and wow. throw a party that way. I didn't Outsource. Know that. Go to your favorite bakery and get dessert from there and put it on a platter. And, right. Okay, yeah. I'm actually gonna use that. Yeah. That is very inspiring, very cool. So tell us, what is like the best party you've ever been to, ever? Oh, besides my own? Yeah. Um, I to went to I went to this uh, party in the Hamptons once for Fourth of July, and it was no joke the craziest over-the-top party I have ever been to. It was laughable. I mean, they had they had these hot models shucking <laughs> oysters for you, yes. uh, just walking around. They had like 10 different food trucks from New York City. A Mr. Softy came in. At one point, a marching band came in. Yes. They, had a, they had a s'mores bar with all this like no. crazy giant candy bars. There was a game for the kids to play. There were these three giant teepees and the kids had seven seconds to go into the teepees and get as many presents and prizes out what? of the teepees. Uh, it was beyond. And then the wow. fireworks came. There were giant <laughs> loungers for everybody and the fireworks were going off. It was, it was beyond. I love that. I love that. <laughs> So when you what said TV like top. gifts, Lucas was like, I'd be in those TVs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was Lucas's birthday party, actually. Yeah. I'm trying, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so any hot party trend for 2019? Hot party trend. I have to say togetherness. Mm. Togetherness. I think I think you guys are craving social things to do yes. together. We definitely. And I think <laughs> I think the whole notion of 
Ina Garten, who's queen, and I love her, and she has a quote on the back of my book. You know, all this make ahead, foolproof, you have to do it all before. No, do it in the moment. Mm -hmm. Do spur of the moment stuff together. Just being together. I think is I think that's I think that's the party trend for the year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you just celebrated 15 years since your first date. With oh my Neil gosh! <laughs> so I that is believe. definitely something to celebrate. Yes, we had a great celebration. Did you guys do anything fun to celebrate? Yes, yes, we um we had dinner at uh, Manhattan downtown, okay. and a giant. If you ever been there, it's a huge, like 70 floors up, and you're looking down upon New York City. It's amazing. And this year was uh, crystal. I mean, you have Ooh, the year, yeah, yeah. first year's paper, fifth year's wood. You know, this year was crystal. So we got, I got a really cool um, crystal vase and a cool crystal sculpture of, uh, yeah, Beautiful. it was great. And you have any big summer plans with the kids? You I, know, I always see you on vacation with Elton John, so I know you're doing something awesome. We're, 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 at, we're waiting for dates from Elton and David. We'll be there, <laughs> we'll be there this summer for sure. Uh, that's been a tradition of our kids to yeah. grow up with each other. Um, and it's been just thrilling. I mean, they're a great, great duo, duo and awesome dads. Um, but we're not sure yet. You know, Neil's waiting on a few projects. Uh, I'm waiting on something. So it's really last minute kind of stuff for us. Uh, you know, I think there'll be some travel in Europe. Uh, we're trying, we want to rent a Winnebago. Yes. I think the kids are yes. old enough to do a cross country, either in New Mexico mm -hmm. or in Michigan or something like that. Get the family in there and, and just travel, stop at little goofy sh stores and restaurants yeah. and things like that. Those are some of my fun. best memories growing up as our road trips. So you can right? Yeah, it should be fun. Awesome. I mean, get the kids off of the iPads and look outside <laughs> for a moment. That I love could... that. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us My today. pleasure. Thank you. And you guys can pick up Life is a Party wherever books are sold. And thank you to Scarlett for co-hosting today. Woo! We'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, same table.